So, I mean, are they really fairies? And I'm not going to debate that one. I'm fascinated by the story that one of the explanations for fairies called the Little People was the fact that when the first South Celts arrived in Ireland, uh, they, of course, were, uh, if you will, they, they weren't the first people. There were Neolithic people there who were smaller in stature. And the argument, the theory goes, that these smaller people ran through the woods to shall we say, survive and live before the warlike Celts. And from there, germinated the whole story of the, of the little people and fairies. But, uh, I would say I grew up in this culture. We have a fairy hill in Haramein. And rather interestingly, trees grow on every other hill in that area, except that one little hill. Never does a tree grow on that hill. It just doesn't. Fairy hill. Did we bring it across the bread in our pocket? And by the way, I hate to be the one to point out that the crumbs of bread and the hard tack is all wrong. They're absolutely no protection at all. And no protection at all, man. And <laughs> you have to have a crust of stale bread. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Head on. See? Cross the state of way. So is it? Huh? This truth has to be spoken. Yeah. Well, now, in the interest of good matters, we won't argue too much. We're all friends here. As I say, I broke the culture with the seven steps following you behind the night and the, and the three whistles in the dark and all of that. And of course, being becoming mesmerized in the woods is very, very common. Very common. And then there's the, not only becoming mesmerized, uh, some years ago, uh, four or five years ago, a couple from Ireland, on the inspiration instigation of Dale Jarvis, came to my house to uh, do some research in fairies. We gathered some people together, and uh, they told stories in the living room, these girls taped them, all that, took them in children, the fairies, and etc. And what fascinated me was the stories some of these people told. Kathy, you were there, remember? And uh, like Billy Costco told the story of his uncle, Totally true. Who went in the woods, and when he came to the stile, you know what a stile is? Stile? The middle ladder that was up and down both sides of the fence, the old Irish ladder. And his uncle, or his grandfather, came to the stile and could not get over and stood there all night waiting for the sun to come up to come over the stile. He could not get over the stile. Every time he tried, a force pushed him back. And there are many stories of this person who have often heard be in with the fairies. We had a chap in Harbour Man, an old guy, who was actually in the fairies. He never heard much. And some interesting stories are told by him. Well, true stories. He was down at Labrador, as you are well aware, back in the 20s and 30s, lots of people before they went to Labrador fishing. Heard much went fishing. And they had their camp down in uh, Indian Harbour, I believe it was. And he left his camp one night, and somebody said, where are you going, Mark? And he said, I think I'll go home for a visit. So they left, and Martin left. Martin didn't come back that night, he came back the next morning. And everybody laughed again, where are you home, Mark? And he said, yes. What, um, uh, this day's esteem, et cetera, et cetera. He said, I went home on a birch chip with the fairies. And, uh, of course, this is great. Costs of laughter reading this announcement until we began to tell them there is news. Yes, your wife had the baby, we all are doing well. Martin Lowe's uh, cow died, you know, got the cow and died. And then Jim Murphy's horse, he's laid that broken in the woods, etc. Et gave him all this information, and they all kind of listened until the steamer came with the mail. And everything he told them, and there was no telephones, and no this, and no that, everything he told them was in the letters home to the husbands and fathers that were on the station. One other story about Martin Lutz has to do with Charlie Fury. He was, used to, in those days, at the top of the horses out in the commons. You see, he asked to take the shoes off after cake and time, and then run a good while, run to the hay, and then they chew again, etc. Of course, in those days, the horses just ran, ran wild and hurried over the road. And Charlie was in bed this night, and he heard a bunch of horses galloping up Ship Cove Hill. And he heard them stop. He jumped up and followed his clothes and whatnot. Gee, he said, I bet you, he said, old Nancy is, is among them. I must go out and have a look. 
So he goes down, and as he comes to the gate, Mark Malone is there, and he said, where are you going, Charlie? He said, I'm going to see, he said, of one of them horses, Nancy. He said, none of those horses are yours, Charlie. None of those horses belong to anybody in this world. Go back to bed. End of story.